Uh, let's have a look at uh, detailing things like bathrooms, kitchens, other things like that. The process is, uh, is similar. It's basically using Archicad's library parts to populate the room with the sorts of elements that uh, you want to uh, place there. So for example, um, in a kitchen, let's have a look at a kitchen. Um, what we'd be looking at, I'm double clicking the object tool. It opens up uh, Archicad's library. And um, um, in this case, what I'm doing is looking for uh, furnishings. And then somewhere down there, there's kitchen cabinets. Archicad 16's library is quite uh, quite nice. It has quite an extensive range of kitchen cabinetry. Um, as an introduction to library parts, the dialog op box opens. Again, it's set out in a similar sort of way where the sizes of the objects are there. But um, Archi, the Archicad library parts, have, uh, kitchen cabinetry, have got this interface a bit the same as doors and windows where you can go through uh, the counter, the cabinet, uh, drawers and other things like that and or you can uh, just go through them this way and uh, and go through each one of them and so you can change these to say three drawers or uh, uh, alter them as as you see fit yeah um, um, you can see that there's preset settings that you can uh, choose from. Um, you can also see the object in plan uh, in uh, elevation uh, in 3D and in a shaded view and it also gives you a generic photograph of the image and ways in which uh, you can view that. So that's not necessarily what you're going to put down it's just a photograph of of uh, one alternative method of putting that in. Um, basically, let's uh, start uh, with a corner cabinet. So I'm going to grab, say, this one. And you'll notice that in the plan view, there's these little X's. And one of them has got a box around them. That's the one that you're going to be placing uh, the object down onto the plan from that corner. So if I say OK, um, and you'll notice that in the library, uh, in the info box, there's a couple of ways of placing objects. Um, this one here just puts the object down, okay, in the same orientation as you saw in the window. This one here is quite handy because when you click a point, you can then rotate that object around to the way that best suits your room layout. Okay, so in my case, I want to put it in this corner. I click that corner and I can rotate it around so that it, uh, holding the shift key by the way, locks it, ver locks that line vertically, and I can place that object into uh, the room. I'm using the marquee to just cordon off a section of my model and uh, generating a 3D view using F5 on the keyboard, you can see uh, the objects being placed placed in there. Um, it has a number of uh, interesting points about it. When you select an object like this, uh, you'll notice that there is a number of purple spots. Each one of those allows you to stretch the object in various ways and uh, interact with the object. So I'll just demonstrate those for you. Control H is the stretch command. So for example, I can, I just generated that, Control H on the keyboard. I can grab that corner. You notice here it says counter height. So I can adjust the counter height using that purple spot. Uh, if I try it again, I can Control H again and click this point here and a little thing comes up and tells me that that's an adjustment for the toe recess okay and so uh, if you want to if you if I hit tab on the keyboard you notice that it gets highlighted uh, and I can add in uh, the dimension I want 
hit escape on the keyboard and uh, you come out of that. You can also do things like uh, control H. I can click this point here and uh, you can swing the door open if you want to have it open and show clients how you might want to use the kitchen for different you know the storage units for different uh, things. Um, let's have a look at putting another cabinet in so back to the floor plan F2 I'm going to double click uh, the library tool the little chair um, and let's pick a, uh, a drawer unit um, let's say this one and I'm going to place this unit from this corner say OK and click it over here and rotate it back around holding the shift key so that it goes into place you notice it seamlessly joins the countertop that's one way of putting a kitchen all together generate a 3D view and you can see that uh, I've put in a draw unit and for example I can select that unit uh, go into control H again let's say I pick up that corner I can stretch uh, the unit again holding the shift key so that I can set the width of the drawers to whatever I like hitting tab on the uh, cursor I can say uh, make uh, 900 wide drawers um, just make sure that that little button is turned on otherwise the little pet palette uh, that you click on that gives you all these distances and things won't appear on the screen um, and you know you can uh, go through and, and pick all the um, all the cabinets that you want you can change uh, as I said before you can open up the library tool and go through each one of these things and change the appearance of the cabinet so you can change the types of door knobs that you want the types of uh, colors and materials that you want uh, and there's a whole range of kitchen cabinetry that you can play with there's also um, a whole lot of uh, equipment there appliances so you can go through and choose oven tops and sinks and uh, it goes on and on I'm sure you'll have hours of fun playing with that sort of stuff okay um, now if I wanted to generate a drawing of all of that I think uh, the best I hit escape just to get out of that back to the floor plan F2 uh, the best one of the best ways of doing that is to use the internal elevation command uh, what it does the way it works is you notice that uh, you also have a layer to put it in so if you don't want it visible on the main floor plan you can switch it off and only have uh, the marker visible um, on a bathroom or laundry detail or kitchen detail so um, I am going to change the scale of this thing so down here uh, I'm going to set that to say 1 to 20 and say OK and suddenly the scale increases notice by the way Archicad adds detail once the scale increases so now I can see architraves where I couldn't before I can see uh, walls rendered where I couldn't before Okay. now internal elevations the way they work is uh, you can use them a number of ways but I guess the simplest way is you firstly draw uh, if I sorry select my uh, internal elevation tool I'm going to draw a rectangle that represents the face of the walls that I want to draw and then drag that back to where I want to view the elevation from so it's going to see all the way back to the wall but it's going to cut the elevation at this point here so it gen generates a little symbol the, these uh, little uh, drawing IDs change once I end up putting these drawings onto a layout uh, but I'll show you that in a moment 
Um, you'll notice that in your uh, navigator palette, in internal elevations now, I get uh, a new drawings and I can uh, double click any of those and it will bring up uh, information about the cabinetry that I've just created. So, uh, and at that point, I can then, um, oh, well, I can change the settings so you can uh, um, edit the uh, interior elevation settings. So if you don't want color or other things like that, you can go into modeling and change that back so that I don't get color. But I can add notes now and dimensions, just like I showed you in dimensioning uh, for the drawings. I can add those sorts of dimensions in. Um, I can add labels, um, and I'll talk about labeling a little bit later. But you can add notes and dimensions, and then save that as a drawing um, to put onto your layouts. That would apply exactly the same for a bathroom. I could put showers, basins, toilets, and uh, do exactly the same sort of thing to populate a bathroom layout with all the equipment and uh, fixtures that I want.